Welcome back to my channel. For a while, I've been doing bohemian inspired decor. And a while back, I started a new series where I was going to expand the styles and start to do other DIYs in different decor styles. And last month, I did a mid-century modern decor video and you guys loved it, so why not do more styles? I asked you guys which one you would like to see next and Scandinavian was by far the most requested. So today we're gonna be doing some really beautiful and really simple Scandinavian inspired inspired DIY decor. I also wanted to give you guys kind of a style guide for each of these different styles that we're gonna be doing in this series. So if you're anything like me and are on Pinterest and always save Scandinavian homes to your Pinterest boards, I'm gonna give you a complete guide. So let's first off start with vibe. Very calm, cozy, and clutter-free. The spaces are really functional and could be called minimalistic or minimal, but it's clutter-free without sacrificing any of the beauty or any of the aesthetically pleasing moments in the home. Every piece of decor in the room just has a purpose. So whether it's to the person or to a function or the way that the person lives. And then the color palette always has a very soft hue type palette, very calming colors, colors that are often found in nature, but also with a little bit of a high contrast. So you'll see lots of dark colors paired with these very soft tonal colors like whites and taupes and sages, but then black steel windows or a black vase somehow incorporated. For true Scandinavian type furniture, you'll see a lot of blonde woods. They're not overly stained in dark colors or treated with a color in any way, like painted. And the furniture is also multifunctional. So the shapes are really simple, but you'll see a stool maybe that's also storage, a bench that also has a shelf underneath to have shoes. For fabrics, this is where it really gets fun with Scandinavian because it's very, very heavily textured. So you can play with all of the same soft color palette, but have tons of different textures. Natural fibers like linen and chunky, chunky knits and sheepskin throws and with other natural fibers like leather. So think very textured and very warm. For window treatments, it's very, very minimal and very very sheer if there's any curtains or window treatments at all. It's very dark most of the year in Nordic countries, so they don't want to block any of the sunlight that is going to come in, so keep the window treatments very, very minimal. If you do have curtains, make sure that they're sheer so you're still letting in lots and lots of light. Lighting is also really important because just like letting the natural light in, because it is dark most of the year, you'll see lots of candlelight moments. They'll use lots of candles throughout the house, which is a really warm light, making sure that you have ample light in a room. For art, you'll see lots of line drawings, textured abstracts, and graphic prints and like gallery walls. I've done Scandinavian style gallery walls in a lot of my room makeovers, like my office and a recent boho makeover that I did that incorporated some Scandinavian prints. And for accents, you'll see lots of plants, really letting nature come indoors, organically shaped ceramic vases, metal details mixed in with organic materials. So you'll see like bronze lighting. In the midst of all of these cozy cozy neutral soft hue textures you'll see graphic print pillows something that really adds a pow or a wow moment in this all of this calmness so you'll so I compiled a list of all of the elements that you could incorporate to really have a cozy Scandinavian style home so for our first DIY project, we're gonna be doing some organic shaped vases, but it's gonna be kind of a thrift flip and we're going to be using glass vases as well. So I've been saving and collecting these glass vases from my thrift trips thrift trips, <laughs> my thrift store adventures, all in the hopes to do something with them eventually because they had some great shape. So I wanted to pick out some shapes that are true Scandinavian, so super simple, nothing ornate. And then we're going to turn these glass vases into kind of an organic shaped look. So what you're gonna need for this project is air dry clay, a rolling pin or a round glass of some kind, parchment paper, E6000 glue, and something to apply it with, acrylic paint. I'm using some acrylic paint with a chalky finish, carving tools. You could totally use toothpicks or some skewers. First, you're gonna wanna take some parchment paper, and this is actually how we're going to roll out the clay so it doesn't stick to anything. And I always find that my rings and my fingernails really affect 
texture of the clay a lot so I like to remove any rings that I have on. Take some clay out and mold it together and we're gonna flatten it out to about a quarter of an inch thick and we want to make it the size of our glass. So I'm starting with this smaller glass piece and I just want to make sure that I have enough clay to wrap around the whole thing. Next I want to put some E6000 glue directly onto the glass. Even though the clay will stick really well to the glass already, I want it to be like extra stuck. So I'm just going to put some E6000 right onto the glass and then roll the clay onto the glass. And if you have kind of a rounded glass like this where it's smaller at the top, you're going to have to do a lot of molding like I did just with your hands. But air dry clay is super forgiving. It doesn't dry super fast. So you're able to add more pieces as you need them. You're able to kind of mold any lines that you have or any like weird indents that you have in the clay. I really wanted it to look organic. I didn't want it to look extra, extra perfect. So I didn't mind if there was a little piece here or there that was a little odd shaped, I guess. And then you also want to do the bottom. So next we're going to add a little bit of detailing, but I wanted to test out what details these tools actually made. I have like round shapes and triangles, and I just went with this triangle shape and actually etching out the clay on the edge of the triangle. You can see that it kind of makes a different shape. And I started by going and making a line all the way to the top of the vase, and I actually ended up not liking it. So I just went with about an inch long line around the bottom and just flattened everything else out. So I'm gonna set that one aside and work on my next one, which is much taller. So I'm gonna to have to make sure that I have enough clay to wrap around it. And I ended up using the majority of the clay that I had left in this pack, doing the same method, applying the E6000 glue to the glass vase, and then just wrapping the clay around it and molding it around. This one was a little easier because it was really straight. And then add some detailing in and then just let it dry overnight. 48 hours would be even better for drying time. And the next step was to do painting to make them a little extra special. So I tested out some chalk paints that I had in the color Oyster and Maui Sand. I haven't ever painted with these particular paints before. I definitely wanted to try them out. So for the small one, I picked the Oyster color. And this is a pretty simple process, guys. You're just gonna paint over everything, going into all of the little lines too. I found that I needed to go over those a couple of times just to make sure that the paint was in those lines. You can also spray paint these and you can use any type of other acrylic paint that you have. Next DIY, we're gonna be doing a graphic print pillow. What I like most about the graphic print being in a pillow is that you can easily move it around your house, style it in with some other natural fibers to mute it down or pile a whole bunch of graphic print pillows on your couch to make a really big statement. So they're just fun and you can do so many different things with them. So for this project, we're gonna need a pillow cover and I chose this one from Ikea and it's a natural linen color and it's called the Jofried pillow. And this is my favorite pillow insert from Ikea. Some soft fabric paint. You don't want to use acrylics on fabric because it's going to make it really stiff. I'm making a specific design, so I want to use a wide flat brush. The color combination that I'm going with is brown and black. So on the linen, I think it's going to be a pretty contrast. Just going to start by laying out your cover without the insert in. And I'm going to insert a piece of cardboard into the inside of the cover just to make sure that the fabric paint doesn't bleed to the other side. The design that I'm going for is kind of two semicircles coming from each side, but how the semicircle is made is actually with lines. It's not going to be like a solid semicircle. I really want it to look a little abstract and a little organic, but I do want the lines somewhat straight. So I did opt to use a ruler just as a guide to make sure that these lines were gonna be somewhat evenly distributed and also somewhat straight. So I started by making the middle one first and then the bottom line and then going in the middle of those two lines and then in the middle of those two lines just to kind of evenly distribute them so that it had a, a cohesive kind of look to it. 
The brown color I used on the right side and I just went back in and rounded out the edges a little bit. And then once I had the bottom half done, I just did the top half. On the other side, I wanna do the black, but I wanna do them thicker and then in between those lines. So not the same, not identical to the brown side, but just a little thicker, a little different. So I'm using a little wider of a brush and using the same method, using my ruler going in between those lines. And then I actually did go back and made these lines even thicker because I wanted there to be a difference. next DIY we're gonna be doing a piece of art and I want to try a few different things line drawings and graphic prints are really popular so I want to do a play on texture and also line drawing and combine them together with a graphic element I don't know <laughs> we're gonna see how this goes for this project we're gonna be using a piece of plywood or a canvas frame if you have one or an old piece of art some joint compound which comes in this green bucket from the hardware store, a putty knife, and some markers or paint, and we're gonna test each of these out too. So first you're gonna take your piece of plywood and we're going to apply this joint compound really textured to the plywood itself. So just taking your putty knife, dipping it into your joint compound and then wiping it in all different directions on top of the plywood and I like it textured, so I wanted some of the lines on the edges to show or you to see that it was going different directions and then also going over onto the sides of the plywood too to finish out those edges. And then I just set it outside to dry in the sun for a few hours, but if you're gonna leave it indoors, just let it dry really well overnight. After it was all dry, I did do a little sample board to see our difference in markers or paint. So I definitely liked the first marker the best. It was the thickest and the most smooth. And I also tested out some washed out color of this unbleached titanium paint from Blick. And I literally just took some of the paint and washed it out with water until I kind of got the consistency that I liked because the look I was going for, I wanted this square in the middle of the art, but I wanted it really, really subtle. So the more that I could wash it out, the better. So I placed the tape six inches in from each side. Depending on how big you do your piece, you can determine how big you want the square inside. Before it dried, I just picked up the tapes so it didn't like permanently stick to my art piece. And I wanted a kind of floral, abstract look. So I just Googled a picture of some eucalyptus and this is all freehand. So I just kept going back to look at the eucalyptus picture, kind of drawing the veins or the stems of the eucalyptus first with a pencil and then going over that pencil mark with this brush marker. And I'll link it for you too because it's a great marker. I love this marker. I've used it in a lot of paintings actually. And I wanted the eucalyptus to kind of go out outside of this box that we painted. So making sure that the stem is kind of extending outside of that. Once I had the stem all in place, I just freehand went back in and drew all of the leaves. I find it easiest to just keep referring to the picture. So like look at a specific leaf on something that you're painting and then copy that look onto your painting. And I have done my fair share of paintings, but you guys, I'm totally an amateur. I just practice, I just try things out. If they look bad, I'm just gonna, I'll just plaster over it and I just keep kind of practicing and then you kind of get the hang of it. But I really did like how this came out with just kind of like, abstract leaves, eucalyptus, and not every piece is perfect, but that's okay because it's meant to just kind of be like rough and textured and a piece of line art.
for our last DIY. This one is super, super simple if you have the right tools and the tools are pretty accessible. We're gonna be doing wood block candle holders. Since wood is often blonde and really natural, we have an opportunity to just use untreated wood, not stain it, not do anything overly crazy to it. And also since candlelight is big in this style too, to make wood, and candle holders and put them together. <laughs> so for this project, we're gonna be using a three by three inch piece of wood and mine is about two foot long. So I could actually do several of these candle holders some taper candles and some tea light candles because I'm gonna show you how to do the method for both. For our taper candle style, we're gonna need three quarter inch copper end caps and you can get these at the hardware store. You're gonna need a drill and also these spade bits. For a taper candle, you're gonna need a one inch spade bit. For tea lights, it's gonna be one and a half inch. I need some E6000 glue. So first I'm gonna measure out how tall I want each of my candle holders to be. There's not gonna be anything added to them, so this is gonna be the finished measurement. And then using my miter saw, I'm just gonna cut on those designated marks that I made, but you could totally use a hand or circular saw that you have. My miter saw, I find it's just easiest for me to con control a really clean cut, so I like to use it. When you cut wood, it can get kind of rough on the end. So I just take a sander block and just smooth out any edges that are kind of like messed up. For each of these candle holders, we're going to be putting a hole in the top part of the block and that's gonna be the top of our candle holder. So the end cap is gonna hold our taper candles and then the tea lights already have a metal band around them. So the idea is to have your spade bit be the same size as your candle or whatever your candle is going to sit in. Unfortunately, I don't have a one inch spade bit. I have a one and an eighth inch. So I'm gonna go with it and just have a little bit of spacing around it, but I recommend using a one inch. And then you're also gonna wanna mark how deep you need to make your hole, just with some blue painter's tape or anything you have to let you know to stop drilling at that point. My method is just like slow and steady. It's gonna shave the wood out into a circle form so that when you take your candle, you can just plop it right in super simple it does take a little bit of pressure like you kind of have to push down on it a little bit but once you get going you get the hang of it so next I'm gonna do one of our taper candles and this one is the smaller bit. So it's actually easier because it's shaving less wood. Slow and steady, it'll shave out all of the wood that you don't need. I opted not to seal or stain these pieces as Scandinavian style is very blonde, natural wood. But I would like to put a sealer on it, but because these are candles, I don't wanna recommend anything because I'm not fully versed on what would be fire safe, fire resistant option. I read a lot online but a lot was contradicting and I just don't want to tell you guys something that I'm not 100% sure on. Next, we're going to slip our end cap in. You can see that I really did need the one inch bit, but you know, I'm making do. So just taking some E6000 glue, I'm going to glue it right in the center. It's not going to move. There's just going to be a little bit of spacing around mine. It's so important to use the end caps with your taper candles so that when the flame burns down lower, it's not touching the wood and then catching the wood on fire. It's actually in this cap. Always monitor lit candles just to be safe. you guys enjoyed this guide to a cozy home and DIY Scandinavian decor. And if you guys haven't checked out some of the other decor styles that we've done for this type of series, I'll leave them linked down below for you. And if you're not already subscribed, we're gonna be doing more of these. So let me know in the comments what style you would like to see next. Also, if you guys don't already follow me on the vlog, you won't know yet, or if you did see the vlog, you do know that I'm in the process of redoing my living room. And it is Scandinavian inspired. That is coming very, very soon. So if you don't follow the vlog, I give you guys sneak peeks all the time of kind of behind the scenes of what I'm working on, what I'm gearing up for. So I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you guys next Sunday for another DIY video. Bye guys.